all about pond plants today on Pots and Trials, and that's brought to you with the support of Cobra Garden and Darlac. Hello and welcome to Pots and Trials. Well, one subject that we've never talked about before is ponds and aquatic plants. So we're away at the moment at the Malvern Spring Festival and I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to talk to a specialist. So I'm here today to have a chat with Dawn, Dawn Fisher. Hello, Dawn. Hello. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. All right, so you're Lincolnshire Pond Plants. So we are. Whereabouts are you based in Lincolnshire? So we're based on the north bank of Lincolnshire, so we're between Lincoln and Grimsby on Old RAF Binbrook. Oh, right. Oh, that's not that far from where we are then. So we'll have to pop up and have a look yeah. at the nursery. So here you are. You've created the, this display, a, a raised pond, which I suppose yeah. that a show is much easier than digging down, yeah. isn't it? So, yeah, uh, it definitely So is. How, what's the logistics of doing this? Because you don't just turn up with plants and put them on a flat stage. And you, there's a lot of preparation, I presume. The preparation is, is quite difficult. So first of all, we come with the sleepers. Mm -hmm. We then have to screw them all together, put the liner in but we have to wheel the gunner into the middle first. Right, okay. Because it's so heavy, we'd never be able to lift it over the top. No. Most of the logistics is down to getting water. So we have to get water in, which they do here from a hose pipe, and then we have to get it out again at the end, where they just let us let 5,000 litres <laughs> flow. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah? You just pull the plug, as it were? We just yeah. take the side off and it just runs out. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> oh, I bet. Yes, that's quite interesting to see. So, looking at the plants here, because I know lots of people are interested in, in ponds, but they probably don't know a lot about the plants. So, these are obviously all aquatic plants. So, can we just look at one or two? Because you've got a, a fantastic range. Lovely, yeah. I mean, we have a, a whole range of plants. Some of them are quite shallow and, and, and will only want a very small amount above the top of the pot. Some of them will go a lot deeper and have a lot more water above the top of the pot. So when you look at the depth of a plant, it's all zero is the top of your pot. The depth then is the numbers that come up the water above right, it. Right, OK. But some of these, you get like the low growing ones, such as the Baldelia here, yeah. which is ideal for things like your frogs and newts. And this one, it, it can ha cope with about this much water above the top of the oh, pot right. of it. So you can go fairly deep with And that it'll pond. end up having the little leaves come through, but it flowers constantly throughout the year. And totally hardy, you can leave totally it in the pond all year hardy, round. Totally hardy, native as well. So native to the UK. I love this one, the cardamine. The cardamine, there. lady smock. So that'll be quite shallow in the water, but it's found a, a very native in the UK. Lots and lots of edges of ditches and things like that. Right, OK. So that's, these are what we'd call, are these marginals, if you refer to marginals? Is so that what these are? So if you think of marginals as being within the margin of your pond, right. not round the edge of your yes, pond. Yes, yeah. So, so the shallows almost. The, yeah, they're on the shelf. Yeah. So you put them on the shelf. So there are lots of other spreading plants, but you've got your emergent plants like the Typha minima over there, which is ideal for your dragonflies okay. and your damselflies. Right, because they've all got different leaf structures, so they'll attract different insects yeah. and Well, you've got your little dragonfly, you've got your dragonfly larvae, it's like swimming around in your pond. Yeah. And it'll keep going around in your little pond. And then they create a nymph and the nymph then climbs up the stem and then he's hanging on for grim death. And then it's a bit like the film Alien, he comes out the back mm -hmm. and then leaving the little empty shell of a nymph on the side, dries his wings and right. flies off. And of course these, you've got them in the big pond, but these would be ideal in a smaller pond, wouldn't they? Because they they're never going to get any bigger massive. than that. Yeah, no. they don't spread. So Typha minimas are ideal. Something like your little Baldelias are ideal for small ponds. Mm -hmm. Butamus umbellatus, because it has like an agapanther type flower, mm -hmm. are ideal for small ponds. Yeah. So they can go in a little bowl or they can go in a barrel or they can go in a bigger pond. Exactly, yeah. I love the ranunculus as well. That's obviously a buttercup, isn't it? Ranunculus. It is, yes, it one is. That grows in water. And it's native. So if somebody has like a stream coming in or going out of there, cause a few people do, they have like a little mm. pond and it ha it's, it's fed into another stream, you've got to stick to native plants. You can't inv sort of introduce something that's invasive yeah. to the wildlife, basically. So ranunculus is native 
absolutely fantastic. So is the potentilla on the side. Right. So okay. completely native. Well, to I want UK. to ask you about a plant round here. So if we can just step round, because uh, the potentillas, yes, I mean they're they're native and they love the wet, don't they? Uh, they do, and, yeah. and so do the germs. But I've noticed here. So this is um, no, it's not what I'm looking at. I'm looking for an equisetum. Of, oh, equisetum. I've seen one on somewhere. The end. Oh, is this an equisetum here as well? Can it I... is. There are there are several different types. Yeah. So an equisetum is in the garden is a is horsetail or mare's tail. Yep. These are aquatic equisetums, aren't they? They are the same. Right. So equisetum as a horsetail, the larger variety, which is over at the other end of the pond, this is a flutile, which is usually found a lot in the bottom of ditches. Mm -hmm. And these have a more branched effect. You get a tiny one, such as in here, we get some tiny, like scopoides. This right. is an equisetum, which is a very miniature version, which is quite nice to have and fits in nicely with other plants. And then you get the larger horsetail, but the larger horsetail, if it gets in your garden, is super invasive. Right, so you've got to restrict it keep to the it. pond. If you keep it in your pond, it isn't going to get out. Right, okay. So just uh, to end off, what, what about maintenance with this type of thing? You know, do you have to cut them back? Do, they, do you just put them in and let them do their own thing? Or you no know, feeding or anything like that? The problem with ponds is that if you get decaying things into your pond, so leaves from trees, decaying from your plants, they create fertiliser, which mm -hmm. then makes your pond nutritious. Sunlight, nutritious water makes green water. If you cut them back at the end of the year, so come autumn, just chop them all back, get rid of all the debris. Okay. If you do get a green water problem, best thing to do, go to the supermarket, buy a bag of watercress, put it on top of the water, it'll clean your water. Really? Well, that's a good tip, that is. And very often people talk about the balance of a pond, which is when the water is adjusting, I suppose, and you get rid of that green water and it clears. And part of doing that, if I'm right, you're the expert, not me, Dawn, is you have to have a certain percentage of the pond with plants in or covered to shade it to keep the water cool. Is that right? So what you need is you need to have about 70% of your pond covered in shade. Mm -hmm. Because if you get the 70% covered in shade, what you'll find is you're preventing that sunlight coming through. Mm. And it's the sunlight, nutritious water. So this nutrition can be from fish poo, bird poo, anything that comes to your water yeah. that's going to make anything. Debris, runoff from rain, from grass. So if you feed your grass mm -hmm. and then it rains, you're putting fertiliser into your pond because it's run into your pond. So it's all that preventing the nutrition and the mix with the sunlight. So if you get the balance right, so you want 70% shade. If you do get green water, get a bag of watercress from the supermarket, put it on the top, it then starts to root and then as it roots it eats the nutrients out of your pond and then you can scoop it off and take it away and it works a treat. Can you eat it? You can eat it as yeah, well, not answer. that I'm entirely <laughs> sure I would eat it from my pond. No, but, but <laughs> yes. Yeah, oh, that's good. So, so it's not that difficult, really, to set up a pond. You obviously, you don't have to do it on this scale. As you say, it can be a small one or even a, a big container bowl. with just a few in. And it's just lovely to have water in the garden, isn't it? It is, because yeah. it encourages all those insects, which then encourage all the amphibians and everything else to come. Yeah. So and the birds to have a bath. Absolutely. So great for wildlife. And I see yours has attracted wildlife. You've already had a duck on it this morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That came from the security guards at Harrogate. Oh, did it really? Oh, yeah. right, OK. So they kept saying, we're missing something from our pond. And then right. we came in one morning and they put a duck on the pond. Oh, right. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks for showing us. And we've got a container we're going to plant in the summer. So when we're ready to plant it, we'll pop up to see you and you can advise us what's best to put in it. Lovely. Thank, Thank you. you very much.
thank you for watching Pots and Trials and I hope that's given you some ideas for your pond. And don't forget you can watch all the videos we've done on YouTube. Just search for Pots and Trials and you can subscribe for free. We'll be back in the garden again next week live on YouTube on Thursday the 1st of June 6 p.m. UK time. And of course if you've got any gardening questions you can send those to us in advance and I'll answer them on the night. So we'll see you then. Bye.